Okay, we get a lot of questions, both Mark and I, about using box squats. Box squats are a very valuable tool to squatting, but here's the issue. Even when you're raw? Yeah, so even when you're raw, even when you're raw. I'll repeat that at least 10 times. <laughs> so why do most people not see a significant carryover to the box squat? It's because they do it wrong. If you look at my competition footage and my box squat footage, those squats look exactly the fucking same. And I'll tell you why people screw it up. When they go to sit on a box, most people are gonna sit down and then they're gonna rock back, which is gonna give them catapult energy to go this way. That's how a box squat doesn't work. So when you get down to the box, what you have to do is keep fighting to go this way with your knees and open up and sit back the heel. Now you turn this into a pause bench. With this being pushed out, there's only one way to stand. That's to push out harder and then flex up. If you'll know you do it right, if the knee doesn't move. Mm. So if I see somebody come off the box and they do this, right. I know they're loading the wrong muscle. Right. If I see them do this, it's gonna transfer over to a raw squat. Okay, the box squat is the exact same as a free squat, other than you're stopping and separating the eccentric and concentric chain. So when I go to box squat, my setup's the same, my foot pressure's the same, and my chest is the same. There is no difference between this, a free squat, and a box squat. The first step to any squat is to turn the butt back, to reach with the, with the butt this way, and then draw the knees that way. This puts me in prime position. So people that tell me, or I see all the time online, that you can't squat that way, keep a vertical shank and it's hard on your back, they don't know where to position their chest. The chest stays high. So as I get here, I'm gonna reach back. As you can see, my chest is not falling. I'm opening up my legs. I'm stopping and pausing. I'm not bouncing on the box. I'm pausing and keeping this pressure 100%. And then when it's time for me to go, I push out to stand. See how efficient that looks? There's no knee travel forward or hardly at all. And that's how you squat for lunch. Something I also explain to people very often is that like, we all just like squat, you know, kind of differently, you know, and there, there are some different ways to squat. There are people that really like to drive that knee forward. And we're seeing a lot of big squats done that way. We're seeing world records broken that way. We're also seeing some world records broken. Matt has broken world records, Stan Efforting. Others have broken world records where they kind of have a style where they sit back more and they're in a flatter shoe. Eric Lillibridge comes to mind. So there's, there's different, yeah, there's different ways of, of performing a squat. So even for somebody who maybe this style doesn't exactly match the style that they use in competition, this is still a good way to squat. Yes. Just like a front squat's a good way to squat, just like using a safety bar on occasions, a good way to do it, just like using chains, having some variety, having varieties of spice of life, yes. varieties of spice of training as well. Variety is the spice of also making sure that your joints are healthy. So what I say is, is that everybody has their own squat form and talks how and preaches how they do things. Right. I tend to listen to people that's at least been in the game for 20 years or more. Yeah. Here's why. Something has created longevity in their technique. So you have some guys that do squat knees forward, but I would venture to say that most of those dudes have a short career. Um, if you look at Ray that's Williams, possible, yeah. he's in his 30s. He squats like I do. Ed Cohen squatted like I did. Right. Um, so you're talking most of the best Stan squatters. Stan came in late. Stan Efforting squats a lot like we do. Yeah. The point is, is that sometimes you have to step back and go, maybe this isn't what I, I'm good at right now and look at the long game and say, how is this going to fix me in five years? Because to be a great power lifter, longevity is the key. Yeah, and if you're going to just think along the lines of what Matt's saying, if you're squatting 10 years from now, and you continue to work on perfecting your form and technique, where's your squat gonna be? Yeah. You Lots could potentially be listening to this, now you might be a 700 pound squatter, or you might yeah. already be strong, you might be like Marcus over there, who's uh, already squatted over 800 pounds in, in knee wraps. But still the point is, if you're squatting 10 more years from now and you're working on perfecting your form and technique, there's a possibility you start creeping in the 900 range. Yeah, my form needed a lot of work when Chuck Bulgapool found me, when Ed Cohen saw me as a child. And, but instead of going, well, that's not how I squat, I listened to what they had to say and let Eddie Cohen tell me what to do and practice it. Let Chuck Vogelpool right. practice it. And that's why I am where I'm at today. It's not going, well, that's not how I squat. A lot of times the initial way you bend and move in a movement is not always a key sign to the way you should be squatting. It took me years to learn my form. People look at my form and go, your form is amazing. That didn't happen overnight. My form didn't look like that at 16. Take a long time and strength goes along with that form and that mobility. So just as, and everything. Yeah, so just as much as having strength, you have to think about longevity. The guy that gets the strongest stays in the game the longest. 
It makes sense. Because And it rhymes. You can be a badass motherfucker at 23, right. but I want to see you be a badass motherfucker when you're 40. We all want to be like Stan Efferding or Ed Cohen and have super long, multi-decade careers. So you broke records in, with Equipped, and you broke records, raw. you broke an all-time world record squat raw. How were you able to do that? Did you just box squat all the time? No, so what I found was that I needed to mix and match my squatting. So what I did was I did a free squat every two to three weeks. And they did a box squat or a variation of that in between those areas. So the key is I didn't overtrain the free squat. I kept it in the program to keep it fresh, but not overtrain. So you still key, know how to move, you still know the timing of it all. Yeah, if you really want to know how to squat, you need to do 10,000 reps. Yeah. Right? 10,000 reps is going to tell you how to do it right. But the problem is you don't want to do 10,000 wrong reps because then it's murder to change. Like you have beginners at your gym would you rather take a guy that's a clean slate and teach him how to do everything perfect or somebody's done something wrong clean slate years? yeah clean slate every time